my Don Smith spinoff over Unity Tesla coil. Um, the future version will have a much bigger transistor. And I just have it sitting in a bowl with a little bit of water in it to keep it nice and cool. And I don't need that when I run it at normal settings. I'm just doing high power tests. And this is a 150 watt halogen lit to full force with my over unity Tesla coil. <clears throat> That's gonna have a lot of heat. And we still have wireless power. And I can take these wireless lights, touch them, they get brighter, ground them, they get brighter. See that it gets very bright. I still maintained my impressive wireless range. And I'm not even pushing the system as hard as I could. I could get the range up to probably a few hundred feet if I wanted, which I will eventually do. And this Tesla coil, it's actually constructed with thick gauge wire, not thin. So it's a real Tesla coil. Real Tesla coil should be as wide as it is tall, which this one nearly achieves, and the wire gauge should be medium to thick size, not thin. I'm using 26 gauge wire, and the future one will probably have 24 gauge. Bigger ball too. So, we are running the halogen from the excess energy in the primary coil. And the correct way to do this would have it be to pass through a full bridge rectifier. And I was getting more than 500 watts out of it. And I melted up this rectifier I made that was rated for 500 watts. And I'll probably include the pictures in the video somehow. That's hot. So this is the DC supply that runs it. There's obviously more than 1.3 amps in that thing. I'll turn it down and we can see what happens. It's much lower now. I'll keep lowering it. And I'll disconnect the halogen. And I'll just show you how efficient the circuit is on wireless power. So without the halogen running, we're consuming 20 volts, under half an amp. We still have impressive wireless power. Range is still pretty damn good. I can take these little mini receiver lights, touch them to anything grounded, they still light up. This is the radiant energy effect. that to metal it lights up touch it to just stray wire lights up <coughs> in doing this doesn't place a drain on the transmitter touch it here it lights up touch it here it lights up So basically what this thing is doing is disturbing ambient. Kind of a Don Smith idea is incorporated into it. Um, the future versions will have a very high voltage transistor. And because it gets extremely efficient at high voltages. So I'm thinking maybe for an input of like... I'm thinking maybe 100 volts DC and try and get the current draw very low and the effects of the radiant energy should be nuts. And I don't dare run that halogen bulb on those settings now. <clears throat> Look at this, just coming near the wire it glows. I don't know if you can see that. Just bringing it near the wire makes it glow. Just bringing it near the ground makes it glow.
How wild is that? Even in a bucket of water. Close. So, the proper way to get this thing to really scream. Feed it with high voltage DC. Probably 100 to 200 volts DC. Very low current. Maybe half an amp. Your output will be phenomenal. And I really shouldn't be showing this without charging a lot of money. And for people who want to know, I sell this as a kit for 350 bucks. It comes with the Tesla coil, the variable power supply to run it. It doesn't look like that. That's my bench supply. The one to run it uh, is a little block supply. It's just a little rectangular variable supply. It's actually a little more efficient than that one. And you get five of these wireless lights. And you can do endless experiments with them. So I'll put this down to 40. And hook this back up. And that comes on. We'll do experiments. So disconnect. We're drawing. 0.7 from the supply, 700 milliamps. We connect. We're drawing 1.2 amps. It's obviously more than 500 milliamps flowing through that. Good lord, that's bright and hot. And yeah, I have many plans for the future of this to make it scream. This output here can probably run half a house. So, basically what's occurring is the Tesla coil, which was built properly, is disturbing ambient because it's varying its capacitance with respect to time by quite a bit. And when the field collapses, it dumps its extra energy into the primary coil, which is running the load. And the extra energy is getting sucked in from the environment. So that explains it. It would be best to have this insulated. And due to the new models I have already planned to be built, I'm not going to tell you how to make the top even better because that's my own invention, my own ideas. No one's ever built Tesla coils the way I'm building them. Um, I have some old books I'm reading that detail everything how to do it. Listen to them on Audible. It's a huge help. Um, everyone builds them incorrect just to make big sparks. That's not how a Tesla coil works. A Tesla coil is designed to be a generator of wireless power. Everything you put near it activates in its bubble of influence. And the voltage and current are not meant to be out of phase. So that's why you rectify everything to DC to run your loads. And I'm telling people too much already. would be best to turn this to DC have it go to a big solar charge controller charge your batteries and then your batteries run your inverter so once the system's on it's off running and that's that's full 150 watts in that bulb I can feel the heat like you could probably cook one egg on that so as you can see, while that's running, I still have impressive wireless power. <clears throat> that's extremely bright. I can touch this to ground. And these lights are being lit with one wire, which is the ground wire, going through a chain of LED lights into a coil that's just sitting on this thing and as you, see, as you see when I tune the inductance it'll get brighter or dimmer tuning the inductance and those LEDs are about to pop so I have to switch to the biggest LEDs they got which were like 10 millimeter jumbos so there's that radiant energy effect still and there's no degradation on that output when doing this. You can create unlimited lighting. Well, that's there. Still going. But 
very bright. Works in my hallway. Even on my bathroom sink. Anything grounded. So yeah, the correct way where you'd probably get even more power from this is to insulate the metal sphere and coat it with probably a piezoelectric material or maybe a bismuth. And I'm saying too much already, I shouldn't even be saying that. But you want your top load insulated because the uh, excess charge from the environment which would be like cosmic rays or radio waves that come flying in they can pass through any clear dielectric they hit the top load but they can't pass back out and the fact that your circuitry is switching in the megahertz range you have superconductivity and you get negative resistance and due to that you have such extreme power output so that explains that and that this is getting very hot and it's interesting to note that when I run bright halogen loads from the raw RF output, this is a raw RF output right now. It should be going through a rectifier, but my rectifiers keep burning up because there's over 500 watts output here. This one burned up. It literally melted itself apart. These were some chunky diodes. And I'm using all Scotty diodes for the rectifiers. 100 volt, 5 amp ones. I ordered some 20 amp Scotties that are coming in soon. So I figured I'd explain how all that works. Um, the only avenue to a free energy generator, I would say, is probably through something that harvests energy, moves it from point A to point B extremely efficiently and you put your tap in the middle and it should be solid state have no moving parts which is what this thing is and it's acting as a charge pump sucking energy from the environment so I'll disconnect runs that and I really gotta get a temperature gun connect it back up like that is a lot of heat that's all I wanted to show uh, I explained the theory on how it works there's effects occurring here similar to the Moray valve being the top load and if I coat the top load with exotic materials and insulate it when the field collapses and dumps into the primary I'll have tremendous output to run loads and I'm saying too much already I should be charging a lot of money for what I'm saying <clears throat> because no one wants to even read old books anymore on how electricity really works. So, that's all I'm going to say. You guys should, if you want to know, should study up on Eric Dollard, um, Ken Wheeler, old electrical engineering books on Audible, um, Electric Waves and Impulses by Charles Steinmetz, and many others. I should have had the list of books. Um... But yeah, stay tuned. A lot more to come. And while that load is being run, I still have very good wireless power. <clears throat> I feel heat in my hand from this. So, that's all I wanted to show. So stay tuned.